Hi everyone, so this is a second vid for the third lesson of functions. I hope you're kind of getting used to this idea of functions. It's just really what the, uh, the range and the domain are, and maybe with a little bit of um, inverses as well. So it's not too bad, but nobody likes it. There we go. Right, so it says find the inverse function for this equation. Okay, so step one, make it y equals. So I've got y equals 2x plus 1 over 5x minus 2. It's a massively complicated uh, question to do it on. Step 2 is switch your x and your y over. Some teachers do it, they switch the x and the y over at the end, but it makes no difference. And then I've got to rearrange it to get y on its own. So this is a bit that most people don't like. As a GCSE question, the algebra involved in this normally gets absolutely stuffed up. So I take that up there, it's x lots of 5y minus 2, it's 2y plus 1. I expand the brackets, I then put anything with a y on the left and everything else on the right. I then take out y as a factor. I divide through by that. Ta da! <laughs> right then. So, let's have a think. Now, this here, the uh, domain bit, it's saying that it doesn't work for two fifths because if I put two fifths in there, it's a divide by zero. And if you look on the bottom here, this is a similar thing. If I put two fifths in there, I'll have a divide by zero. Now, if you look at it, look at it, look. It's the same bit. It's the 2x plus 1 on the 1 plus 2x. It's the same. So, oh, not put my inverse in there. I'll put my inverse on one. So f to the minus 1 of x is 2x plus 1 over 5x minus 2. And this is called a self-inverse. It's proper random, but it's called a self-inverse because when you do the, the inverse, it perfectly reflects itself in the line y equals x. Uh, now that can't be used for x is not equal to 2 fifths again. Really, we should have like the... The, um, the x belongs to the real. So there's one for you to do. Uh, for the, let's not let me do it. Let me take the box off. There's one for you to do. Uh, give that a go. Right. There we are. Now that isn't a self-inverse because it looks different, doesn't it? So for this one, on the bottom, if you had x is 1 in it, you get like a divide by zero, which is undefined. So for this one here, if I had x is minus 4, that would be a divide by zero, which is undefined. Hence the bit that says not equal to minus 4 there. Right, so I said to you it was a reflection in the line y equals x. And that's important. But what's quite nice is it means you can switch... Um, coordinates. So if I've got, let's have a look, so that's 2x minus 1, isn't it? So if I had, I uh, can't really see from your graph, if I had a coordinate which was 1, comma, let's do it, no, that's not good, is it? 2, comma, 3, let's have 2 in and I get 3 out, that would reflect to 3, 2 on the other graph. So I'm switching y and x over because I'm doing the reflection in the line y equals x. That's like a right angle there. So it says that they are symmetric about the line. The reflections in the line y equals x. So it's a reflection in the line y equals x. So whatever equation you've got, 
That idea with the swap X and Y over, it's the equivalent of graphically reflecting it in the line Y equals X there. So, there we go. Right, now randomly, if you wanted to solve it, there's this little bit at the bottom here. So any point line on the graphs, f of x and the inverse, satisfy each other. But if you see where they meet here, so you're like your f of x is equal to your inverse of x. But if you try and solve that, that's too hard. But it's where it meets y equals x. So what you can do is you can either say that the, the inverse is equal to x or f of x is equal to x. And that's what this is about. But you can solve it. So it's easier to solve it. So if you try and solve the inverse equal to the original function, it makes it quite tough to do. So that's a little bit random down the bottom there. Uh, whew, here we go. So there's another example. So I might leave this and do something separate.